Good afternoon, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. What a show today. We've been able to book Dr. Jose Bolanos. Dr. Jose Bolanos is someone you probably even know about him. He is the CEO of a company called Nimbus T. And let me tell you, this is a cybersecurity group, a cybersecurity company. They are doing incredible work. I was so excited to get Jose and on the show today. They are doing encrypted identity login systems to protect enterprises. And it's so fascinating. We have to get right into it. Dr. Bolanos, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hi, Andy. I'm, uh, thank you very much for uh, having me on the show. Jose, this is super amazing technology. What you've been able to do this is so important and so interesting. Let's get right to it. As you know, we like to pull the lens back to 30,000 feet to talk about the company. Let's give a little overview of what Nimbus T is all about. Let me start by introducing myself a little bit further. Um, I actually am a, uh, I was born in El Salvador, Central America. And I came to the U.S. with uh, my family when I was very young. Anyway, I wound up going to USC as a biomedical engineering major, and then UC Davis uh, for medical school, and finished up at Stanford as an OBGYN infertility specialist. I was in practice in Los Gatos uh, for about 22 years. And uh, during that process, <clears throat> I actually created my own information system to manage all patient information. And one of the things we encountered was identity problems. Uh, uh, on the east side, of, I had an office in Los Gatos and an office on the east side of San Jose. And all of a sudden we had 10 Maria Gomez's, right? <laughs> and and uh, identity was really a problem. It's just a number. And if, if you're a patient, you're looking at, let's say you have information at three hospitals, you have three different identities and a doctor does not have access to your information. Uh, so getting this information together has been a real big problem through the years. The federal government created something called health information exchanges. Uh, so you have electronic medical records where you put your medical information. And then they created health information exchanges because they were having the problem where they were accidentally putting the wrong medical information into the wrong record, right? So in, in San Antonio, there was a problem where they had something like 1,100 uh, Hispanic women with the same name and 110 of them with the same birth date. So it's a problem. And you have twins, <laughs> you know, I mean, how do you actually differentiate which one actually had the, uh, the appendicitis, right? So um, I had that problem early on with my data system. And what we initially did was this is like 25 years ago, I created a... Um, an identity that was uh, a unique identity for each patient, essentially a new, a new data field uh, on all our records. That was the first initial last name dashed in the eight digits of the birthday. And that helped us tremendously. As the federal government, again, mandated electronic medical records, health information exchanges, uh, they haven't been able to solve the problem. And identity has really been a massive problem. With the COVID-19 uh, problem here, uh, people are logging in from home, right? <laughs> so that's posing a significant increase in cybersecurity risk for hospitals. So um, what we did was Nimbus actually has been in evolution for about five to six years. And we've actually gone through a number of different uh, development teams. Um, the most recent team right now actually is out of South America, believe it or not. So we have four engineers actually out of Colombia and two designers out of uh, Ecuador. And so we're, <laughs> we're online at 9 a.m. every morning and we're about ready to launch. Uh, and what we're doing is um, it's a, we have received a patent on our new solution in 2019, 2018, in November, uh, October, November of 2018. And what we've done is this. On a database, you have an identity, and we encrypt that, and then output is a QR code, encrypted QR code. Uh, for patients that are elderly that don't use phones, this gets printed onto a card, so it's a static encrypted QR code. 
for um, more advanced, what we've uh, what we've migrated to is a dynamically encrypted QR code and a dynamic pin. So every time, uh, I'll show you our app in just a second. But basically, what you wind up doing is um, the first time that you log into our app, you have a temporary username and password. After the registration process, we do a KYC, a know your customer, similar to banks, and so. We have you upload a professional picture for a directory because everybody gets a directory um, access. We've uploaded 600,000 doctors into the system with uh, their NPI, National Provider Identifier Numbers. And so what, what happens is you, you, have, you then take a selfie picture, which we then uh, we collect data for facial recognition. And then the third is a picture of a government ID. So when you have artificial intelligence that compares all three pictures, and says, ah, okay, they're all the same. We activate your Nimbus key, okay? Now, if not, then we have to call you. <laughs> you, know, why? <laughs> you know, is this a fake account or what? Um, so what the problem we're solving is this. Over 6.5 billion usernames and passwords have been stolen uh, and are being used to attack everything. And, you know, they come in with usernames, passwords, uh, the emails and, and they fool you into thinking that you have to enter your information into another login or something. Uh, the federal government of the U.S. has actually been attacked. Uh, hospital systems, it's, it's been a nightmare. So unfortunately, some of the big players like Okta, they're worth like $20 billion. Uh, they're still using mechanisms that are deploying usernames and passwords. Like, you know, if, if, thumbprint or a facial scan. In fact, my iPhone 12, <clears throat> they have facial, facial recognition. But what's really funny is, and I'll show you in just a second, um, <laughs> I created a demo account, John Smith, and it's linked to my face. And so when I go to log in, it does facial recognition, logs me in as John Smith. Now, I could create an account with your name and then Apple's facial recognition cybersecurity, which it's not cybersecurity, will actually log me in under your name. Uh, so criminals actually still have open roads here. Uh, so when we think about cybersecurity and facial recognition and thumbprint, um, we're still using usernames and passwords. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. That is so interesting, Jose, what you've been able to develop with the dynamic encrypted QR code. Let's give a few real world examples, if you will, doctor, with regard to how the Nimbus T key can be used in, in various aspects and, and various protocols, if you will, for, for a regular person that's watching the show and they're saying to themselves, wow, they've really solved something here. This is the next evolution of encryption and, and cyber security and tightening everything up. How will the regular person be able to use the Nimbus T code in what type of um, application? Um, so what happens is the following, we're approaching enterprises. So from an enterprise standpoint, we would begin with a beta program with them. Since we authenticate the person when you log in, right, um, we then have to communicate uh, essentially the last mile. So John Smith on, on our system that is totally secure on the back end, when then we've authenticated that person, we then have to communicate with the, your employer, for instance, right? Or it could be the bank or it could be a hospital. So, so your one global ID can connect to multiple systems uh, based upon us having implemented the connection with those systems ahead of time. So uh, one example that we say, like, let's say you have Salesforce and you work for them. And we say, hey, uh, we'd like to begin a beta program with 100 employees. So we would get that information. We would issue uh, an email that says, please download our app, register. And half of the information for you is already in there because it comes from your employer. So then you'd make sure that everything is correct, your email. And, and from that point on, once you've registered, our, our artificial intelligence then activates you or inactivates you. Uh, and then at that point, now you're connected. So uh, can I share my screen? I'd like to share my screen with you now. This is the uh, nimbus-t.com, uh, our cybersecurity website. 
Uh, and in fact, we blog every day on cybersecurity issues, which um, are really nice. But here's our app. You can see on the left-hand side here, we have our uh, different services. Um, one is my Nimbus ID, my um, directory, and then messaging. And essentially here you have John Smith, dynamic pin and dynamic encrypted QR code. We have a patent on this system and we also have uh, trademarks on Nimbus-T and Nimbus-Key, our, our system. So what we're looking at is when you think about cybersecurity, uh, many companies are spending millions of dollars on cybersecurity uh, solutions, but the front door is a problem because it's really unlocked when you have all these passwords that have been uh, compromised. So using an encrypted QR code and a, uh, and, an, and a dynamic pin, we prevent phishing attacks, keystroke loggers, stolen passwords, malware injection, ransomware attacks. And, and then each person, again, uh, every time you log in, it's a different uh, Nimbus encrypted QR code. Uh, and so uh, we've got some nice information here. What I want to be able to do now is show you an example of what we do. So, for instance, we have uh, a customer, or let's say, again, uh, we were one example is a hospital or you work for somebody. So let me start here. And what I'm going to show is an example, a demo. Can you see me there? Yes. So what I'm showing you here is our app, and it's basically saying Nimbus ID, secure, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to sign in as John Smith, okay? And Apple just did facial recognition, and I'm John Smith, and I'm logging in. So here is our app. The very first button says, my Nimbus key. So your Nimbus key now is connected to five different things here. And that's where the demo Nimbus, Stanford Medicine as an example, Salesforce, Chase Bank, and Vantage. So let's say I'm a doctor and I have 20 patients in the hospital and I have to round on them every day. Currently, you have to put in a username and password and then you're logged in for five minutes and then they log you out. So you see the patient beforehand, afterwards. I mean, you're talking about <laughs> a real big problem. So, so here, what we've done is uh, essentially every customer will have their own new login screen. Instead of a username and password, they would actually have a connection to the camera. So here is the logo. It says Nimbus and then uh, John Smith. And so I come in and I scan it, it, goes to our server, and you punch in the dynamic pin that we just sent you on the phone. And you submit that. <clears throat> and you've now been successfully authenticated. There's your picture. Uh, and then we continue. And you now are into Stanford uh, system. Uh, again, if we're thinking about um, you're working for Salesforce, it's again, a similar process where all of a sudden you would say, okay, I'm at, I'm at work and now I'm going to select Salesforce <laughs> And uh, I'm in uh, once I punch in my numbers here. Now, instead of a username and password, what we're doing is giving you a whole new way of logging in and not having to change usernames or passwords in the future. So how do you like that? I love it. It is so interesting and so amazing. I've never seen anything like that, Jose. Wow. So, so the idea will be that as all the enterprise companies, they bring on your Nimbus T key that I'm going to use Nimbus, my Nimbus key for everywhere. I'm going to use it at the bank and I'm going to use it on Salesforce. And I'm going to use it when I log into this website, into that website, into the physician's website, hopefully. Well, what's exciting is I think over the next three years, we're going to be a foundation for a brand new way of logging in and protecting enterprises. And our API will be used significantly. And uh, Okta, 
will probably come uh, come talk to us at some point in time. Uh, but again, since my background is in healthcare and uh, been actively involved in managing patient information for a long time, um, you know, we really want to play a big role in allowing a person to know that you have a new ID system that will allow you to protect your information, your medical information, your other information, um, and it's the foundation for everything else. To give an example, with COVID-19, you have people that are waiting to get their testing. They're in their cars for somewhere to six to eight hours in some t- instances. It takes 25 minutes manually to do all this. Now, imagine showing your Nimbus ID, right? You drive up, you show them your Nimbus ID, then the person with their iPad essentially scans it. So all of a sudden, you give them authorization for your information. Now it's on their system. Now, at that point in time, they do the test and they scan the barcode on the test and they ask you a couple of questions. Have you had a fever or anything along those lines? And in fact, they'll probably take your temperature. You're done in three minutes, not 25 minutes. Um, now, imagine this. The United States had a really big problem with, uh, with opioid abuse, right? I mean, it was really sad how many people have actually died from it. In fact, young kids. So imagine this. You actually go to the doctor's office and you show them your Nimbus ID. And he or she, with our app, then scans your Nimbus ID. You give them permission to get your information. So now you have a digital prescription that has the identity of the doctor and the patient and goes to the pharmacist. And let's say you're writing a prescription for opioids. We then on the blockchain will actually have a code that will scan that and say, oh, a patient can't have more than you know 40 pills per month and a doctor can't write more than 200 pills a month then all of a sudden you control the problem. And we actually, um, my wife and I were living in Switzerland. Well, we got back a year ago, but prior to that, we were in Switzerland for three years. So we were there when cryptocurrency was going nuts, right? And so I was in London, Germany. We were in Malta, Estonia. And again, we were living in Switzerland. So we're members of the Crypto Valley there. And we're looking at launching a um, a a back end with blockchain that will allow us to manage data in a very secure way. And we're looking at partners right now, uh, a couple of them that I think are really pretty significant. And we may actually be, uh, we're looking at launching NT coin, uh, which is our cryptocurrency in the future. You can look at Nimbus-T.io um, as a new payment system in healthcare, which would actually help employers decrease their costs by 40%. You know, because right now, the way the healthcare system is working, we have significant problems with um, an insurance company, for instance, in the United States, has contracts to pay doctors and private practice 40 cents on the dollar, which is the equivalent of what Medi Cal pays them. And they have contracts with hospitals for 10 cents on the dollar. So I hate to say this, but I was hospitalized in December at a Stanford hospital. I had a a brain viral infection that my wife went, you know, really worried, called an ambulance. I was in the hospital for seven days. The bill was $365,000, but the insurance payment, $36,000. Now, 40% of our population is uninsured, right? So can you imagine getting a bill for $365,000 if you didn't have insurance? It's crazy. So um, health insurance, honestly, should be only for major medical. And everything else should be, uh, we're looking at a potentially uh, having employers buy cryptocurrency that would then allow direct payments. You know, if you have a $5,000 deductible, your employer puts money into a trust account that then they give you a budget on our app that'll say, oh, you, you, have, you can spend $5,000 in outpatient services. Well, guess what? The doctor won't be charging you $250 an, uh, an hour or $250 for a 15-minute visit anymore because they're only getting paid 40 cents on the dollar. You know, it'll be $125, you know. So what we've done in the United States is we are one. We are the most expensive healthcare system in the world, and we're not the healthiest. That's for sure. Uh, the other thing is uh, perinatal mortality and morbidity. We're talking about we're we're fifty sixth in the world. So we have some significant needs, and and we need to 
we need to be able to have your medical information accessible in an easy way. And with Nimbus ID, we will be able to connect all your different medical information into one location using artificial intelligence and then you know, uh, essentially scan through all of it and create a direct list of all your past surgeries, all your past m- medications and things along those lines. So we're really excited um, and totally committed. We have an amazing team and yeah, we're, we're going to be um, making some significant impact to, to help, um, help, help everybody, the enterprise, as well as the user and the patient. Jose, it makes all the sense in the world. The team that you've put together is absolutely world-class. Anybody that wants to see the team, just go on the Nimbus T website. It's very, very impressive. Jose, when we think about data, and we just did the demonstration with you about how the encrypted identity login system will work uh, to protect enterprises, to protect the, the, the individual. Let's talk about data. Is Nimbus T and Nimbus Key, are you going to be collecting data as well? And how does all that work inside your system? Um, currently, medical information, um, the hospital, the doctor, you're responsible for maintaining that data for uh, 10 years. And so in reality, in fact, I had a, a meeting with a friend of mine who's very high up in the government and some significant uh, experience in healthcare. Uh, he had a different vision about <laughs> moving the data. And I said, I said, Tom, you know what? You can't, you can't, like if I have information at three different hospitals, I can't have that information come to me. It, it has to stay at the hospital. So what we have to be able to do is um, use APIs uh, to connect with those systems, then aggregate the information uh, through AI, and then essentially give you a very clean, long list of, of, of what's your medical history uh, been. And, and it gets a little complicated because let's say you had a particular illness when you were 18 years old, but it's gone now. <laughs> You know, you don't have it anymore. So in healthcare, it's kind of interesting. You can't have like a long list of uh, illnesses that have occurred through your life. There has to be a beginning and end right in the process. Um, so, so managing the information is a bit complicated. There's several companies that are actually uh, trying to aggregate that. Um, what we're focused on initially is um, being a login security system that will be used by others in the process. So we'll have part, you know, we're talking to some law firms, some hospitals uh, and and systems that um, what they want to be able to do is protect themselves, not use usernames and passwords anymore. It's, It's a much more sophisticated system. We have a patent on it. And we're looking forward to uh, growing very quickly uh, this year and, and, and going forward. That's amazing, uh, Jose. That's really amazing. You know, you're known as, as anyone can see from the Nimbus T and the Nimbus Key technology, that you're, you're somewhat of a futurist. You're a zygist. You sort of are a shapeshifter. You're thinking down the road before anybody else is. So while I've got you on the show with your medical background, this, this is slightly off the, the subject of Nimbus T, but in the pocket of what we're talking about, what do you see the future of healthcare in the United States becoming? How do you see the, the change of healthcare from where it is now to where, maybe where it's going in the next 10 to 20 years? Um, I, you know, telehealth is playing a very significant role in healthcare. But the problem with that is it should only have a, a small fraction of the healthcare delivery process. Physical examination is a very, very critical factor. I can't tell you how many times just on physical exam, we've picked up large tumors, enlarged uteruses, splenic, you know, some crazy things that all of a sudden you never would pick up unless you're doing a physical exam. So taking care of patients, physical exam and annual visits is a very important function. Um, The digital, the digital world, when we're talking about all these home devices that monitor your blood pressure. In fact, I have something on my arm right now. This is, I'm a type two diabetic 
And this is kind of cool because you actually scan it and it gives you your, your blood sugar. So th those advances are really fantastic. Um, the problem with the delivery system right now is that we have given too much power to insurance companies. And what they've done, this contracting process, what, what it does is if a new doctor has just graduated and wants to go into private practice, they can't because they won't see any patients. All the patients are in the insurance companies, right? And if you're not a member, and in fact, the network's already closed. So you can't, so you have to go work for a big enterprise like Kaiser or Sutter or something like that. And that's sad because it, it's not the same experience. I was in private practice for 22 years and I loved, I, I loved it, you know, to have that relationship with your patients, you take care of them for 18 to 20 years and you've delivered all the, I've delivered over 5,000 babies, uh, was really amazing. So I believe that where we're at right now, doctors that are working for big enterprises are, you like lose your, your enthusiasm. It's like, do I really want to do this? I'm just a secretary is what happens. You know, we need to be able to have doctors to go in the private sector and the NT coin, what we're looking at is having a whole new system for payment that is outside of the insurance system that would reduce costs by 50% overnight. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. And uh, we'll see. Wish us luck in the launch of our NT coin, nimbus-t.io. Check it out. Sign up. Well, Dr. Balonis, it sounds unbelievable. You're an active investor and advisor to different innovative healthcare companies. Uh, you're an advocate for better healthcare for all as you know, we have many younger entrepreneurs that watch the show as well. And we always like uh, to end the show with, with an entrepreneur question. But before I do, I wanted to really thank you for slicing out some time today to talk about Nimbus T. It's been really remarkable. The demonstration is just amazing. So many people are going to be very excited to use this application and this this dynamic encrypted QR code. It's really a great idea, but let's, let's turn the conversation to entrepreneurship. We love to end the show talking to successful people, looking into the camera and talking to the younger entrepreneurs, the, the, the people that are just getting started. They're maybe skinning their knees a little bit and they're, they're, they're maybe a little confused about entrepreneurship. And they look at people on our show who are very successful and they always like to get a little advice, if you will. So maybe Dr. Balonis, Balonis you could give the advice and, and, and talk to the entrepreneurs through the camera and tell them a little bit about what it takes to become successful. Well, what's really fascinating about um, having a startup is that you're actually challenging yourself to create a solution for something that the world has never done, right? It's something brand new. It's something novel. It's in your heart. Uh, you know, you want to accomplish it. You do need advisors. Uh, there are many instances in which um, the... Uh, the advisors play a very significant role. See the gray hair? <laughs> it means you've been around the block a few times. <laughs> and advisors play a very significant role in the growth of a company. Uh, the other thing is uh, team members. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a team approach uh, in the process. And uh, it's, it's a commitment. Um, one of the problems sometimes is that you raise money too early, Right. And you all of a sudden have all these employees and then you run out of money and then you're gone. And like this COVID, oh my God, the number of businesses that have gone out of business is really a problem. So it's a good time to start a business right now because the competition is less. So, uh, yeah, so all I can say is it's in here. It's in your heart, right? It's like something that you love. It's something that you want to do. And basically, you, you will accomplish that goal committed to it and just give it all you got, you know? Wow. That is, that really is uh, well-received and well-taken Jose. Well, I have to call you the good doctor. You're <laughs> in the middle of the cybersecurity world. Your encrypted QR ID that changes every time you log into the app is amazing. You're, you're, you're on the cutting edge. It sounds like of the crypto payment uh, methodology for, for the medical field. Sounds like there's a lot going on and, and nobody better than you to lead the charge for Nimbus T. 
Uh, Dr. Balonis, I wanted to thank you so much again for coming on the show today. This has been a real delight. Andy, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and uh, good luck to you. Thank you again. Uh, you're doing some great work here.